We thank you for joining in our live stream celebration today. Resources for this Mass were posted yesterday to the parish website and on our Facebook page, including a music sheet, the children's bulletin, and tips for watching the Mass in your home. We'll give you a few minutes to get things ready before we begin. Good morning and welcome. Today we celebrate the 16th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Prince of Peace is here to pray with you and support you. We thank you for your continued patience and understanding as we work through the, this process together. Please visit the parish website or Facebook page for important guidelines for attending Mass up-to-date information on the parish, and helpful resources. Prince of Peace is once again participating in back-to-school outreach. We are collecting donations to purchase gift cards for Olathe Public School students who are dealing with homelessness or economic challenges. Please visit the website to make an online donation or place your check in the offertory basket and write in the memo line, back to school. Donations are due by this Friday, July 24th. The Catholic Charities food truck will be in the parking lot next weekend. Donations will be accepted before and after all masses. Ushers will dismiss rows from the back first, at communion and at the end of mass. Please stop by and visit with Zaza and pick up fresh produce after all Sunday morning masses outside of the school entrance. Please wear your masks and practice social distancing while you shop. Our intention for this mass is Milton Dunsky. Our presider is Father Greg Hamas. Please stand. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. So welcome. We celebrate the 16th Sunday of Ordinary Time. We get more parables to help us grow. So brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. 
Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity. They may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. There is no God besides you, who have the care of all, that you need show you have not unjustly condemned. For your might is the source of justice. Your mastery over all things makes you lenient to all. For you show your might when the perfection of your power is disbelieved. And in those who know you, you rebuke temerity. But though you are master of might, you judge with clemency, and with much lenience you govern us. For power, whenever you will, attends you. And you taught your people by these deeds that those who are just must be kind. And you gave your children good ground for hope that you would permit repentance for their sins. The word of the Lord. merciful and 
and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in kindness and fidelity. Turn toward me and have pity on me. Give your strength to your servant. Lord, you are good and forgiving. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit comes to the aid of our weaknesses. For we do not know how to pray as we ought. But the Spirit himself intercedes with inexpressible groanings. And the one who searches hearts knows what is the intention of the Spirit. But he intercedes for the holy ones according to God's will. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus proposed another parable to the crowd, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man who sowed good seed in his field. While everyone was asleep, his enemy came and sowed weeds all through the wheat and then went off. When the crop grew and bore fruit, the weeds appeared as well. The slaves of the householder came to him and said, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where have the weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. His slaves said to him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? He replied, No. If you pull up the weeds, you might uproot the wheat along with them. Let them grow together until harvest then at harvest time I will say to the harvesters, First collect the weeds and tie them in bundles for burning, but gather the wheat into my barn. He proposed another parable to them. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that a person took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of the seeds, yet when full grown, it is the largest of plants. It becomes a large bush, and the birds of the sky come and dwell in its branches. He spoke to them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed with three measures of wheat flour until the whole batch was leavened. All these things Jesus spoke to the crowds in parables. He spoke to them only in parables to fulfill what had been said through the prophet. I will open my mouth in parables. I will announce what has laid hidden from the foundation of the world. Then dismissing the crowds, he went into the house. 
his disciples approached him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He said in reply, He who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed, the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of age, and the harvesters are angels. Just as weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all who cause others to sin and all evildoers. They will throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. The righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The Gospel of the Lord. More parables today, and I'm glad Jesus explained it. So I feel, again, the homily was done, and this is bonus for you all. But um, what I hear, sometimes I listen, sometimes I listen to people, and what I hear is a lot of people are nervous, anxious, fearful about our world right now. Maybe you are as well. We look and we see a lot of weeds in this world. I think the parable speaks to us right now. And the major message, at least I take away, and many commentators as well, is patience. Patience is maybe underrated, uh, but it's so powerful, as I want to explain. So um, patience is really, you know what it is. We, we bear things. We keep peace and calm. Uh, One definition I've heard is to uh, endure suffering with joy. Uh, But patience is is so powerful, and uh, God is patient. A lot of the church fathers interpreted this parable that the weeds and the wheat is God being patient with us, gives us time to repent, to change our lives. So thanks be to God He is patient with us because we're all sinners, but he gives us time to to work all that out. But yeah, let's think about the world a little bit. Let's think about our attitudes and our actions. So the world is mentioned in this parable. When Jesus explains the weeds in the field, he says the field is the world. The field is the world. Our world has weeds in it. And uh, should we go and get upset about it? Should we go uproot all the weeds? No. The answer is to wait. Be patient. God will sort it out. Um, Another response, people have been confused. I know sometimes I'm confused about the world and I'm confused about pandemic. Like what what are the right actions right now? Uh, We can't totally wait and be inactive, but patience also helps us sort it out. Um, By their fruits you shall know them. So first, uh, why is patience good? Helps us sort things out. We all got to sort things out in life, what's good, what's bad. Um, The problem with those weeds, so if you read about it, there's a particular weed that there's mentioned even in ancient texts, and they call it, I think it's darnel, you have to ask Father Francis. He's the herb, herbologist or whatever. He, he knows all that stuff. But uh, it looks exactly like wheat or very similar. This darnel, darn darnel. And uh, it will grow, but when it heads out and it produces its fruit, it's a lot different, this darnel. And it's also poisonous. So it's a big problem. And maybe that was the weed. But at first, you can't tell the difference. We've got to sort stuff out. It does, we have to wait, be patient, and see the fruits. So one thing, you've got to be patient with me. You might be tempted to think I'm good or bad, but be patient. By the fruits, you'll know me. Maybe 10 years from now, we can 
I'll, I'll be able to know myself. Um, but Jesus, in Ma- the Gospel of Matthew, this is chapter 13, chapter 7, he uses this, this phrase, by the fruits you shall know them. He said there'll be wolves in sheep's clothing. And you'll be able to identify them by the fruit. Well, fruit takes time. You know, the seed is just a seed. It doesn't produce fruit tomorrow. We have to wait and see what happens. Um, so sorting things out is really helpful in this time. We have to be patient. Patience helps us avoid the devil's trap. Jesus mentions the devil. Did you know the devil's at work in this world? He has to be. There's some messed up things. In the parable, the devil was the enemy, Jesus explains. He's sowing his seeds in the world. And why? Maybe he wants that toxic fruit to poison us. I think there is a lot of toxicity and poison out there. Maybe he just wants to annoy us. But I think really, mainly, he's setting a trap. Because what's the trap? To knee-jerk react and uproot the weeds. That's what the, the workers want to do at first. Hey, let's go uproot these weeds. Luckily, there's a wise master who says, no, don't uproot the weeds. You will rip up the wheat as well. What does the devil want us to do? To take down good things, to harm each other, to harm our souls. That first reaction, often in my case, is wrong. (laughs) That's why we need patience, that we don't just knee-jerk react. But we're calm and prayerful. We avoid the traps of the devil. Okay, let's wait. Let's not rip up these weeds just now. Um, We need that. I think there's been a lot of frantic busyness too. I I see that. Sometimes we just need to sit back and wait. I think, or be patient. Maybe the pandemic has taught us that. I hope that maybe a slower life, not such a bad thing. Patience also helps us to um, deepen our own soil. So if I could go back of Sunday... If you remember the parable last week, the sower, the seeds, and the soils, um, I see patience in that parable as well. Remember the rocky soil? Seed falls into rocky soil, it grows, but then it withers because the soil is not deep. And Jesus explains it, it's because trials and tribulations come. And We have to be able to endure them. That's patience. To take up our crosses, endure tribulations, persecutions. We're not going to make it without patience. We'll be rocky soil. We'll wither. Also, the soil with the thorns in it. Jesus explained last week what those thorns were. He said they were worldly anxieties. And the lure of riches. All this worldly anxiety doesn't help our souls. It's not rich soil to be really worried, uh, stressed out about our world. Patience, I think we say, God, it's your world. (laughs) And and what can I do about it anyways? I, I can do what I can do. But I can't mess with that stuff. Uh, It deepens the soil. Uh, And we need to be deep soil. Patience also helps us to act. You might think, well, patience is, well, let's do nothing. Let's just sit around. Don't do that. (laughs) We have to act. Uh, And patience helps us sort that out. Um, The mustard seed and the yeast. I think help us with this. We might be tempted to think that we're close to the end and that the mustard seed Jesus started and sowed in the apostles, so small, has grown to two billion Christians in the world and that we should have our act together 
and that things should be perfect, or at least they should be pretty far progressed. Patience tells us not so fast. We need to begin again. Maybe we should start over some seeds. Um, patience helps us start over, begin again. Always we have to do that. Uh, maybe Christianity isn't as strong as it looks. Um, there's a lot of need to act. And it just means small things. But in our own lives, planting the seeds of faith again. Those two parables are about growth and, and multiplying. The mustard seed grows and the yeast multiplies. So how should we act? We should grow and we should multiply faith. There is a judgment at the end. We got to grow. Growth is slow. True growth is, is slow. We don't become perfect in a day. But we got to be working on it. Trying to grow in faith, hope, and love. Root out sin. Grow. That's what a patient person does. And we keep at it. And multiply, the yeast multiplies. It's not just about me and my soul. It's about all people. How can I spread the faith? And that multiplying is slow. To evangelize is mostly about patience. So we want to pass on the faith to children. It takes years, maybe lifetime. We want to pass the faith on to the world Probably we need to work on, or befriend, is a better way to say it, and just share our faith with like one person, or two, or three. And that takes a lot of time too. But slow growth is true growth. It takes patience. So what are we supposed to do? Nothing? No. Grow. Multiply. Patience also is about love when we need it our world needs it this weedy world needs love more than anything not in our readings today but you know it if you've ever been to a wedding before first corinthians chapter 13 saint paul describes love love is patient number one word first word saint paul uses love is patient and the greatest love of all is shown on the cross. And more than anything, I see patience. Jesus bore the cross, didn't complain. He endured suffering. Uh, he didn't stop the evils around him. He endured it. And it changed our world. It changed us. The patience of the cross, that love. To build up the kingdom, we need to be patient, but not a passive patience, but a trusting, active patience. Let's be a people of patience. Whoever has ears to hear ought to hear. So let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. And I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With patient hope, we lift up our prayers to our Heavenly Father. For Pope Francis, Archbishop Nauman, all priests and religious, may they show us the way to grow our faith and bear great fruit in our world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all world, national, and state leaders, may they work together for the good of all people to find a vaccine to end COVID-19 and to work for the sanctity of all lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prisoners here of Prince of Peace, that we may work together to be the good seeds from the gospel by sharing its message with others and through our stewardship of time, talent, and treasure, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and the dying, the widowed and the homeless, the orphan and the hungry, may we reach out in prayer and action to help them find the goodness of God in every day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those who have died, especially Carlos von Felt and Daniel Alcone, may they reap the rewards of being the good seeds with everlasting life with God our Father. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, help us to be patient, to grow and multiply, to, and hear our prayers. We ask them all through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel, so that what each is offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You form man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made, and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so, 
as with all the angels, we praise you. As in joyful celebration, we acclaim, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Joseph our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, 
we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Just a reminder, the pews will be dismissed by the ushers, beginning in the back for communion.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. And we do have the uh, Roots for Refugees, the great produce, just right across the way over there at the school entrance. So please check that out, but wear your mask and social distance over there. Uh, Hope you have a a great week to grow in patience, but I hope God doesn't try your patience too much as well this week. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God.